I'm not a very lucky person, but this level I was very lucky, for the most part. I should qualify an earlier statement. Whenever you stab one of those statues, it's great. It's wonderful when a red potion pops out. But if I didn't mention before, I should mention now that sometimes a red iron knuckle will pop out. Very intent on doing what he does best. And the sort of thing that people get arrested and put in the electric chair for. You know, the, the, the stuff that Lifetime movies are made of. So... Palace 2 kind of gives you a chance to, to look at how Nintendo graphics have advanced. This, this, this is a good example of breaking the monotony that I mentioned about the original Zelda. All the levels look the same structurally. I should say all the rooms. It's not even the levels, really. The level layouts, obviously, are different. But the rooms all look the same sans the color. The colors always changed. Well, in this game, it's minor, but I always appreciated it when I was little. As, you know, young, impressionable children with short attention spans are want to do. The, the basic, just graphics change in addition to the color. And functionally, <laughs> there's a lot more in terms of what this level offers. You have little snakes that remind me of the, the little black flowers from Mario <coughs> Brothers that just kind of sit around, except these flowers actually move. Well, they're snakes, but yeah, you get the idea. I just sniffed something that makes me feel a little interesting. Totally accidental. Yeah, anyway. These guys who you met in level one, all they did in the first level was stab at you with their imaginary penis, so they weren't really a threat. This level, they're a threat. Not a great threat, but if you're careless or... or just you suck, then they will down thrust at you. So these, some of these enemies, I think, could be wrong, but develop as you do. So... When you get the down thrust, the skeleton guys get the down thrust. When you get pubic hair, they will get pubic hair. And maybe I'm just, you know, giving more credit to Nintendo than I should, but that's my assessment, and I'm sticking to it. For no other reason than it amuses me. And here you're going to run into these fucks. They're wonderful if you're strong enough, and if you can get a nice, good down thrust on them, because you'll just bounce continuously on them until they die, and it's just beautiful. I think they're worth like 20, 50 points a piece, so they're not necessarily the best to level up on. But seeing them usually, well, will be better than seeing an iron knuckle. Yeah, don't down thrust that key or you'll fall in the lava most likely and die. And this jizz stain wouldn't move over one way or the other either to fall off or to allow me to jump across and his buddy did the same patience won the day ah and your friend who by now should just be cake the orange iron knuckles are pretty much just free experience at this point they can hurt you to an extent but eh, not really much Yeah, and the luck thing I mentioned earlier is going to come into play when I deal with the first red iron knuckle. First or the second, whatever the hell it is. Ugh, that fucker. And hit those statue heads as well whenever you get the chance. I wouldn't necessarily recommend using a jump spell to do so if you can avoid it. Ah, good example of getting around them without difficulty in a tight space. So yeah, while this game doesn't have walls to bomb or shit like that, it does have its secrets. Most notably, statues. That sort of thing. 